Greetings, I'm DK Rosta. Welcome to In Depth. We're speaking with the Youth and Hospitality Manager of the Bocas Lit Fest, Mariel Forbes, about language and literature as tools for self empowerment. I love reading. No, like, you don't understand. I love reading. Even right now, doing this poem, I feel like I should be reading. From morning till evening, all I'm seeing are my favorite books. Chrysalids, Miguel Streets, all your look at the time. The library is open, so now my day is fine. I wish you could find how reading opens new worlds expands your imagination and mind. I have a never-ending hold on books. But when my eyes tired, my headphones are wired in. And I'm listening to a story, a play or a poem while I'm waiting or... I know there's no time where reading can be paused. And when night coming, I read until I snow. I think books could be your fit. Reading is a joy. Why not get lit? Ms. Forbes, hello, how are you doing? I am good, DK. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. And I'm really happy to talk about a program that deals with liter literacy, so English language and literature, and how that can empower in individuals who engage with it. So let me not wax philosophical about it. I want you to give me an overview of this project. Thank you. So we lit is another youth project by the Focus Lit Fest that is kindly sponsored by the J.B. Fernandez Memorial Trust. And it is geared towards students between Forms 3 to Form 5, um, teaching them about the importance of language and literature in their lives, actually. So we have been... We started off with a video launch campaign um, involving spoken word poets and spoken word poetry to bring, you know, creative ways to send our message to these students. And when you talk about students, what age are you talking about? People in primary school, secondary school, what what, what kind of ranges and demographics are you looking at? Well, forms three to five across Trinidad and Tobago. So I would say anywhere between 14 and 18. Yeah. And what's the significance of that, of that catchment area? And I, I like the fact that you, and I even want to ask about using spoken word to start to bring some of those ideas across. Mm -hmm. Well, the significance of that, I would say age demographic is that we get you, so to speak, right at you know in the cusp you know going up just before the wave crest into cxc so we get these students together these this cohort of students so that we can also prepare them to be you know better able to handle their exams so that's one of the reasons why we chose that age demographic as well you know to get you interested form four is usually where you choose your subjects for form, no, sorry, form three is usually where you choose your subjects for form four that you would do for CSEC. So if we uh, cast in that out to those students beginning in forms three, we can also, you know, help them to see the significance of, you know, English language and literature are uh, um, compulsory subjects. So it's also important that, you know, we get them, you know, as sharp as possible and prepare them for their exams. And one of the things I like about using spoken words, I think it, spoken word as a medium or vehicle for getting some of these ideas across, is that it can help to open or expand the vision of what is possible. I think sometimes we look at things and we think of, okay, well, language and literature, and say, okay, well, it's supposed to be this way, uh, because... This is, this is what we're seeing in the books that we're reading. This is what we're hearing in the classroom. As opposed to saying, okay, well, as opposed to 
reading and saying, okay, but this is how I need to communicate every time. There are other ways to communicate that can show intelligence, that can show different ways of articulating mm -hmm. and are very efficient in getting points across. But with that in mind, though, and I asked about partners and stakeholders, uh, we saw some videos, and I think there's a young lady from Guaya, as well as a very, Guaya, oh, no, Guapo, or, and a very tall man mm -hmm. involved. So yeah. who are some of the yeah. people helping to implement the program? So our first campaign launch video, which is the longer form video, um, we had four spoken word poets from across Trinidad and Tobago. They were Cleon McPherson, Zakia Gill, Dominique Friday, and Darren Sandy. And in the sec the next three videos, we have uh, actually young spoken word poets in secondary school, uh, Aquisha Akul, Destiny John, and Jedediah Joseph. The three of them are actually stars in each of those one minute um, bite sized videos. So we got together to show what it's like, the positive impact of getting lit and, you know, what could happen if, you know, you delay getting lit. Like what could happen um, in life if you, you know, choose not to. So it's like a prevention and a cure almost. And is this, I can imagine some people saying, well, yes, this is a good idea, but as more work for teachers or more work. Is this something that is an alternative or complement to the curriculum, the school curriculum as it is in schools? What What is the thought process behind that? Well, it's, I would say it's really a complement to what is being taught in schools because it also teaches students the power of reading, the power of writing, the power of sharing their stories and journaling. And all of this comes together under, I would say, creative writing and creative expression and also would only seek to help or benefit or supplement what is being taught in the schools on the syllabus. So it really so, just re-engages the students, as you said before, DK, in a different way. Um, spoken word poetry, you know, it's cool. Um, a lot of young people that age are aware of it. And for those who aren't, we want to make them aware of, you know, different ways that they can express themselves and different ways in which they can, you know, put pen to paper in, you know, to express themselves, their ideas, their thoughts as well. Now, something like this sounds as though it's well thought out, but who, who, who are the individuals behind it saying, okay, well, these are the areas that we're going to be pulling source material from. This is how we're going to structure the curriculum of this initiative that is running parallel to the school curriculum. So along with the Bocas Lit Fest, of course, we have been uh, working alongside Darren Sandy, who has been the, who has given creative direction to these videos that you would see, the four of them, the three long, the one long form video and three uh, one to one and a half minute videos. So he gave the creative direction on that video. He also led two masterclasses last month. And he will also lead a third masterclass because it's going to be backed by popular demand. So we'll also run a third masterclass next month uh, for two days. And from this masterclass, students also have the opportunity because they will be crafting stories. They have the opportunity to have their stories published before the end of the year in a student chapbook. So Darren has also been instrumental in guiding um, the students as well, because Darren is also a teacher and the reigning First Citizens National Poetry Slam champion. So he has been instrumental, you know, in bringing a lot of the young, fresh uh, spoken word voices to the schools with us. And it doesn't hurt at all to have that kind of synergy, symbiosis. So, okay, well, yes, he's in the system. Yes, he's also part of the Bocas Litfest family. So you're able to see how both worlds kind of exist and bring them together. So which mm -hmm. I, I guess kind of also 
Nox mitigates certain questions kind of from jump, saying, okay, well, how will this work? How will that work? Because you already have an idea. Okay, well, this is someone who exists in both of these circles. And then I also appreciate about Darren Sandy specifically that this is something that he has been doing in terms of making videos, yes. helping. So this is 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 not as though the, he just started. So He's he a has a, a track yes. record as well behind <laughs> him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But talk and to me also, a little bit. So please, and I'll ask the question after. Um, I was just going to also mention to you two other components of the program or the campaign, I should say. Um, we will start a mini school tour later this month where we will take the same spoken word artists from these videos across Trinidad and Tobago to execute you know or to demonstrate to these same students through performances actually what we see in the video the power of reading the power of writing the power of sharing your stories creative storytelling how it can impact your life in a positive way how it can help you to you know get feelings out get emotions out you know deal with things that might be troubling to you and on top of that you will learn skills to, you know, express yourself and, you know, become better right now. And on that note, we take a short break. We're speaking with the Youth and Hospitality Manager of the Bocas Lit Fest, Marielle Forbes. Stay with us. We'll return with more. Initially, I wasn't where I was supposed to be mentally, socially, emotionally. I, <laughs> I just wasn't me. That is, until I cracked that Jaru's bag to discover new paper and ink, I began to think. What I really do with that blue fuzzy book? That's when mommy said, you're going through a lot. And you're under pressure. When it seems like it's too much, why don't you write yourself a letter? So I began to write and I got back into my groove, no more Scrooge. I was like <laughs> Donald Duck and that wasn't because of luck but because of that blue fuzzy book. <laughs> Welcome back. We are going in depth on the power of language and literature for self-empowerment. We're doing so with Youth and Hospitality Manager of the Bocas Lit Fest, Mariel Forbes. And Mariel, one of the things that I wanted to ask though, the genesis of this program how does that tie into coming out of the pandemic? Because we are seeing repercussions, whether or not you want to call it concentric circles, but the yeah. way that we the way that we assess our young ones at this time in the academic system is your ability for or, or your competence at literacy and numeracy. And we've seen that there is a gap that has widened a little bit. So how does this plug into that gap? Well, DK, honestly, I think that coming out of the pandemic, who doesn't have a story to write? Who doesn't have, you know, something that they'd want to get off their chest? You know, express, you know, to express. And we had the opportunity to all of us, you know, adults and children, to sit with ourselves, I think. And I think that coming out of it, we could all benefit from, you know, writing these things down, journaling, having some form of release as well, you know, um, in expressing the things that we might have gone through and still now are experiencing because of the pandemic. And like you're saying, DK, um, assessment at this time, I think, is such a challenging thing, I would say, as a parent, because I am a parent of a 16-year-old. So it's, 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 we want to make them as comfortable. It's, we want it to be fun. We don't, we don't want it to seem as though it's high pressure because CSEC, you know, from the time you hit form three, you know, that's drilled into your brain <laughs> that, you know, you have CXE or as I knew it in 90, you have CXE and now it's CSEC. 
you have CSEC, you have all these things to finish, you have SBAs to do and all of that. So if we could bring this element of language and literature to students in that age demographic, make it fun, make it interesting, make it creative, give them different ways and avenues of self-expression, teach them different tools and techniques, I think that it would give a really good, you know, full circle, um, like we were saying earlier, full circle compliment to the syllabus and of course, to them as individuals. And in that that point you, you, you make about an avenue for release, I think it's so important. Because I think mm -hmm. many of us have had to sit with ourselves, but we're not necessarily that comfortable with what we're seeing when we when we sit and we and and doing that necessary shadow work. Like I made the comment a little while earlier. There's there's a way that you finish your you finish a, a period of vacation and you go back out to school. And many times people ask you to write an essay about how your vacation was. I said, if people ask that question. I hope there has been some level of capacity building for teachers, yeah. educators, mm -hmm. for the stories and the reports and the essays that they're going to get. Yes. How do they sit with these individuals who have lost someone? How how mm -hmm. how do they help treat with that person as opposed as opposed to just saying, okay, well, we opened the Pandora's box and shocks, we wasn't expecting this. So being yeah. able to articulate your thoughts, write them down. Uh, and get released that way as opposed to something that may be a little more detrimental to physical or mental self I think is so important and being able to do it in a manner that yes it builds on the work that you're doing in school but you may make the distinction and you don't necessarily say okay well this is school because many times when we're out of school we're, ah, not, yes. we're not trying to do more school when we're outside yes of school. that's right we don't want it to feel like more school and what I what I was also to add to your point I was also thinking that you know the pandemic gave us an opportunity I think for re-evaluation and reassessment and reassessment and re-evaluation across the board you know so we can adopt some of these you know um techniques uh in terms of how we teach how our students learn because I think, you know, over two years, it has really done something to our brains and how we function, how we absorb information, how we respond to, to information. And, you know, like you were saying, grief and different things like that coming out of, of, of that. I, did, I wasn't even thinking about that, but that is such an important point you made when you have to write and say, how was my vacation? But then, you know, during your vacation, you might have lost a relative or a friend or relatives and or friends to COVID, you know? So it really brings a, a, a necessary, to me, component to being able to manage and cope, you know? Um, also, uh, when you said about, you know, it not feeling like school, it reminded me too of lessons and we have our very first CSEC pilot lessons classes in English A and English B beginning Monday, September 12th and running for the entire term until the first week of December. And it's been a humongous, humongous success. We are able to bring these classes to students at no cost. So it's a pilot. We'll see. We have, you know, uh, Miss Charlene Joseph Holmes, uh, one of uh, uh, a teacher who we uh, were re was recommended to us, I should say. And we have had many sit down sessions with her. We are very, very excited. Her teaching style, like you were saying, you know, you don't want to feel like you're in school. Her teaching style and her lessons plans are fun. They're interactive. I'm really, really very excited to um, get these classes up and running. We actually are highly oversubscribed. We wanted to keep the classes at 20 students per class. So that would have been 80 students. And we actually got just about 125 students. So we didn't want to turn anyone back. 
So we did some magic and we made it work. And now everybody's included. Classes are during the week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And students have the opportunity to do either English A or English B, or they can do both English A and English B. And we will have to, we want to thank you so much for the work that is being put down, literally invested into ourselves so that we can be more, we can work towards creating our own reality. And I won't ask for contact information at this point in time, especially since you're so heavily subscribed already, but I will in, <laughs> I will invite listeners to and, and viewers to look on various platforms at what the Bocus Lit Fest is doing, especially when you have something coming back by popular demand, because we see that is what is happening at this point in time. So we yes, want to thank yes, you yes. so much, Miss Forbes, Mariel Forbes, Youth and Hospitality Manager of the Bocus Lit Fest, and for, for the work that you and the Bocus Lit Fest is doing. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, I'm DK Ronster. This has been In-Depth. Thank you so much for joining us.